Friday, El Salvador's defense minister issued his government's sharpest condemnation yet of rightist death squads. He said the people of El Salvador should turn the death squads in. He said the death squad's existence is a threat to democracy. That's not all the death squads threaten. They also threaten continued United States military aid. The minister picked an interesting day to speak up. It was the third anniversary of the murder of four American church women in El Salvador. And we will have the report NBC News ran that day. And while you watch, two things to think about. First, despite an apparently strong case, the El Salvadoran government has not tried the five accused murderers. And second, the defense minister had absolutely nothing to say about that on Friday. Today from El Salvador in Central America that four Americans have been killed there, shot to death and buried. A justice of the peace identified the bodies today, three Roman Catholic nuns and a woman social worker. The women had been missing since Tuesday. They were last seen riding in a van on the way into town from the airport. Phil Bremen picks up the story there. The burned-out van in which the women had been riding was found on a lonely stretch of road not far from El Salvador's international airport. Sister Dorothy Kazel, along with lay volunteer Jean Donovan, both of Cleveland, Ohio, had gone to the airport to pick up two other nuns. Sister Ita Ford, along with Maura Clark, both of New York City, were returning to El Salvador from a meeting in Nicaragua. From missions like this one at La Libertad, they taught about religion and more. About basic human rights, about the dignity, your uh, human dignity, um, the necessity of having enough to, to eat. It's because of human rights teachings, the acting Archbishop of El Salvador said that 10 priests, including his predecessor, have been murdered. He said the four women in this van were the first religious workers from North America to become apparent targets of political violence. The American priest who runs the mission at La Libertad said all four, including the two he supervised, had seen violence and suffering among the people here. But both of them have kept a very um, strong spirit and uh, optimistic spirit that we can help them and we will stay and help them the best we can. In the struggle for power here, both left and right burn, kidnap, and kill. But only the right has threatened the clergy for the ideas they spread, ideas that go against the historic domination of this impoverished country by a privileged few. Phil Bremen, NBC News, La Libertad, El Salvador. The leadership of any country, any country, wants to be seen as it wants to be seen. That is not a sin, but it's something to know and to remember. And it's something that makes covering the White House a curious job. That is why presidents like what is called a photo opportunity, which is nothing more than a lack of opportunity to do anything other than take a photograph. No questions, no answers. What follows is from NBC White House correspondent Andrea Mitchell. She doesn't hate Mr. Reagan. She isn't out to get him. She is professionally out to get the story. It's her job. At the White House, any White House, that's not very easy to do especially when he has more experience with cameras than you do. I'm not looking for trouble. Don't aim to cause any. I got business in town, important business. I came from an industry in which ham is the basic ingredient. <laughs> now, you know what a ham is in our business. This is an actor you don't have to egg on. Or a president. All politicians do silly things like this, but no one has done it as naturally as Ronald Reagan. Or as often. Mr. President, can you do a sandbag over this side? I want you to do one more. I was doing it the wrong direction. If his handlers tell him to fill sandbags at a flood, he does. He's the public relations president, the master of the photo opportunity. Driving a tractor in Peoria beats trying to explain unemployment. It handled just fine. Sometimes it backfires. This stop in Boston was supposed to appeal to working class voters until the president ruined his blue collar image by suggesting that the corporate income tax be repealed. Reporters did ask about that and the president's spokesman said, don't tell us how to stage the news and we won't tell you how to cover it. But still you begin to wonder, is there any there there? Or is there life after the photo op? 17 inches. Do we have a president or an actor playing commander-in-chief? No one is better at delivering a set speech. With a teleprompter, he can explain arms control. But without a script, the stuff gets awfully complicated. 
I don't know, but what maybe you haven't gotten into the area that I'm going to turn over to the, <laughs> to the Secretary of Defense. Because the silos will be hard. Yes. How much does he know? Privately, his aides say not very much. He's smart, they say, but lazy. When he does try to explain things, they try to cut him off. It might be well to point out that the increase in defense spending, we have more than cut in half the increase over the Or find a way to take our eye uh, off the ball. Cut. And we are holding it to 7%. Not one of the finer moments in journalism. When the networks complained about being tricked into carrying a not very newsworthy event, one White House official grumbled, they want to run their game shows instead of our game shows. <laughs> For an even lighter touch, the White House turns occasionally to entertainers. Show business meets show business. When all else fails, the show goes on the road. But next time, let him get some rest. That was only a warm-up for the greatest staged event of all time. The Gipper staring down the commies at the DMZ. It also gave him a chance to take a shot at the scene below. The North Korean outpost, the GIs call Propaganda Village. Looks like a Hollywood back lot. <laughs> and isn't any more important. Unlike the White House backdrop, as the man said, you know what ham is in our business. You will never see me hit another puck again. As well as I... Andrea Mitchell, NBC News at the White House.